everyone, it's Tawny. In today's video, I wanted to play with some makeup and use a new palette that I just got in the mail yesterday. Yeah, it just came yesterday. Um, I ordered the ColourPop Stone Cold Fox palette and brush roll. Now, these have been out for like a good while, like I would say maybe a month almost. I feel like I've seen a lot of people talk about it. It's something that people have been using for quite some time. I just realized I put a pore filling primer all over my face, so my pores are going to be filled. So that's great. Um, anyway, I've seen a lot of people talk about this palette and use this palette, and they said it was really good. And I was on the fence about getting it A because it's cool toned, and I found that while I like cool toned palettes, I don't always use them. I don't always know what to do, like what eye looks and such, unless you do like a blue or a like deep blue kind of thing, but like a very ashy toned blue, not so much like your typical um, like bright blue. So that was the Hard Candy Putty Primer, and now I'm going with the Pure Four in One Love Your Selfie Foundation. I've been using it a lot more lately, and I do like it. But I find that in order to like it as much as most YouTubers do, like I know Robbie D. Christie loves this one, I have to use a lot. And I kind of hate <clears throat> I kind of hate that because then it's like if it's a full coverage foundation, you shouldn't have to use a lot. Like I use the Maybelline Superstay foundation that's full coverage and it works perfect, but I don't have to use like this much, like I use a pump. And I know I didn't pump this one, so I guess you could kind of say like maybe if I pumped it, it might be the equivalent. I don't think this is like a pump. I find it easier to use the little doe foot applicator in that, the pure foundation, rather than the pump, just because it's easier to apply. Like I've been saying for a while now, I prefer doe foot applicators to pumps or droppers or even the ones that like you have to pour onto the back of your hand. I hate those because I end up pouring too much and it leaks or it falls everywhere or it like just makes a mess and I end up wasting way too much than like way more than I need to, way more than I know I'm going to use. So that kind of always like bums me out whenever I go to use it. Um I like this foundation. I don't think it's nearly as full coverage as everybody else says. I guess you can get my mini review slash opinion on this foundation. Um, I think it works really well. I think if you're not looking for a super full coverage, if you're not trying to cover anything, it works well. As you can see, I have a lot of blemishes that it hasn't really done much for. Maybe I need to put more on. Maybe the way of like applicating it would help. I don't really know. Um, it's okay, and I'm kind of glad I have it, but it's one that when I run out, I probably won't buy again. Pure is one of those brands that I just kind of feel like I'm not crazy about. They just don't do anything that, like, excites me. They came out with their Barbie collection. I think they did it more than once. Barbie, not Barney. It sounded like I said Barney, but I did not. But I liked the thought of that collection, and I really liked the blush palette. But then I'm thinking, am I ever going to use that? Probably not, so I didn't get it. And then I really like the packaging on the lipsticks, but again, I don't need to spend that much money, first of all, on lipsticks like that, just for the packaging. And then it's like, am I gonna use it? Because I use lipsticks when I'm feeling lazy, when I'm doing my makeup casually, when I'm doing it like, like today, where I just plan on hanging around my apartment, making dinner, watching some TV, like, doing very minimal stuff like where I'm not planning on being out all day where I need my lipstick to last you know because usually that's when I use a liquid lip just so I know that it'll stay all day because like what's the point of putting on lipstick if it's just going to come off you know and I'm the type that I start to immediately like drink stuff early in the day like I always take a water bottle with me to work and sometimes I stop at Chick-fil-A and get tea because their tea is like the bomb the bomb diggity but yeah I'm trying not to put this on my eyelid, but because it's so far up in my crease, I kind of have to. And I use the Real Techniques Face and Body Blending Brush or Blending Sponge. You can tell it is bigger than the normal sized one. And I don't, you guys are probably going to think I'm weird. I do not wet these. I just find that I like the application better when it's dry. Plus, sometimes I'm not in the mood to go and 
walk to my bathroom and wipe them, get them clean, so that kind of, and get them wet. I mean, so that kind of my laziness is why I do it the way I do it, which is so dumb, but it's just how I do it. Um, yeah, that was the Flower Beauty Light Illusion concealer. I don't like the foundation just because it's too dewy for me. I have very oily skin. Like it sometimes is more dry, but typically it gets dewy. And that one I find is just way like, it pushes that to the extreme and I just can't handle it. So I just don't use it. Plus the lightest shade is almost too dark for me. Like I pretty much can't use the lightest shade. So like until they expand their shade range, I can't even give it a proper like, you know, a proper shot of how I feel about it. I just used the Milani Prep Set and Go Transparent Face Powder. And I think I'm gonna need to get a new one because I have hit pan like a long time ago and it's starting to like crack on the edges. And I don't really like that as getting everywhere. But the only time I've ever seen this has been at CVS and it was like in weird, like in a weird spot that it shouldn't have been. And I think they might be discontinuing it. I've heard somebody say that it was harder to find now and it concerns me because I really like it. And I wanna try the glowy one also, but I've heard that one's hard to find as well. So I don't know if maybe they're phasing it out. Like Milani, stop coming out with lip products. Stop coming out with baked products that I'm not interested in and start coming out with powder that we want. Like just re-release the same powder in the same formula and packaging and all that. But um, I get there are some people that like the baked stuff. I particularly do not. I just find that they're harder to work with. They're pressed a little bit too hard. I'm just not a big fan. And I don't really like the way they look either. That's just my personal opinion. Like I know a lot of people like the BH Cosmetics baked formula for their eyeshadows. But I particularly, like I personally, oh that looks bad. I really don't like that formula. I find that it looks bad, like to me, it just doesn't look the greatest in the palette. I'm just not gravitating towards it. And I just kind of, I don't know, it just looks too weird to me that maybe that's why. Um, maybe I need to give it a shot and see if it's actually worth it. I know I think Jen Loves Reviews said that she liked their baked formula better than their regular eyeshadow formula. So that's something to think about. Um, I know, they came out and I'm like jumping all over the place. I apologize, but it's just what I'm thinking what I'm coming up with. But I know BH Cosmetics came out with two eyeshadow palettes for the holiday season. And I was very interested in the smaller one, I believe that had like 16 shades or something because it had some really nice glittery shades, shimmer shades in it. And I was like, you know, maybe I'd use this. It'd be nice to have in my collection. It'd be nice to get something new. I mean, half of my makeup desk is now new makeup, new eyeshadow palettes specifically. So that kind of like, maybe I shouldn't, but I want to, and I probably will. But I've think, been thinking about getting that one, but then I saw that Emily Noel here on YouTube, she had said she really liked the bigger one, which I wasn't quite as interested in just because I thought a lot of the shades were like so similar and just, it was too big, too much. And I just didn't want to like, get a palette that big because I wasn't sure I'd get any use out of it because that's always my biggest fear. But she said she's really liked it since she got it. So that kind of makes me want to try it and see like maybe I'll like it. And I don't know. Um, I've bought a lot of palettes lately off of Poshmark and other websites, but typically Poshmark just because I can get some really good deals. That's how I got the ABH Sultry palette and the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill palette and the two Dominique Cosmetics palettes that I have, but I'm kind of holding off until after I move because I don't wanna get all this brand new makeup that could potentially break whenever I'm in the process of moving because that would not be fun. But I also got, not on color, not on Poshmark, I can't think today, oh my gosh guys. I made it through a whole work day. I hope my brain wasn't like this while I was working. But I didn't get on Poshmark, but I bought on ColourPop's website, the Stone Cold Fox palette. This is not sponsored in any way. Paid for it myself. I'm sure you guys can tell. I'm really glad to have this palette. Oh, and this is one of the brushes. This is the E22 brush. I'm really glad to get this palette because I just noticed it has a very matte white in here. And I've been wanting a matte white for a long time because none of my other palettes have them. I have literally gone through every palette and haven't seen one. So then I felt more okay getting a palette that had one. I'm using the shade Luxe, which is a little bit more cream toned 
it's not quite as white, but it's still a white shadow. And I'm just using that to set my base. I'm not expecting my makeup to last forever and to look super great because like I said, I'm just gonna hang out at my apartment and like do nothing the rest of the night. Probably do a little bit of packing just to like say that I've packed. Um, I've been extremely lazy when it's come to packing so far and I find that whenever I do start packing, you know, closer to whenever I'm moving, it's going to be overwhelming and it's going to like hit me that like you put it off, you should have started earlier, you should have, you know, packed stuff you didn't need. And my mom's been telling me this since like really like a long time ago whenever I thought about moving, which was back in like May, my mom was like, pack all the stuff you don't need. So then that way you don't have as much to pack later on. Well, I would have been living out of boxes for months. So I don't want to pack too early, but my whole thing is I feel like I'm going to find a reason to need to, um, a reason to need the stuff that I put away. Sorry, I couldn't think there. Now I'm going in with Quarry Days, Quarry Days. I don't know. I'm just using that as a transition shade, but I'm always afraid that like I'm going to pack away something I need and then going to end up like unpacking that whole box or whatever so I think tonight I'm gonna try and break that cycle because I've only ever packed to move once I've only moved once and it was when I moved from my house where I grew up with my parents that they still live there to here and now I'm moving from here to like the other side of town so it's not like I'm moving that far away like so I really don't have to pack up a whole lot and I don't have to worry about making sure it doesn't break. I mean, I kind of do like when we're moving, I'm gonna have to worry about that, but not so much right now because like all I have to do is just get it in the boxes, make sure the boxes aren't too heavy, make sure that they're gonna be able to be transported whenever the time comes and just make sure I know like what's in the boxes. I definitely wanna label them so that way I'm able to find stuff once we move and it can kind of like, I can put down like, okay, this is kitchen item, so I'm gonna put kitchen and then I'm gonna put what's in there or at least like a general basis. So then that way like, maybe I'll put all my silverware in a box and then put like forks and they'll be like, okay, all my silverware is with that. You know what I mean? Like could always put silverware, that would make more sense. But you get the gist, like put one little thing and then it'll spark my memory of like, okay, all this other stuff is with it as well. I really like the way this palette is looking so far. I do find that there are enough warm tone browns that I can like do a decent look without it being too cool toned because I always tend to gravitate towards, I guess more like neutral browns, not so much warm or cool toned, but just something that's like in between. And I think that's what I'm kind of going for now. I'm just trying to find stuff that isn't like colors that aren't quite as cool toned so that way I can try and make it work a little bit more. Um, because cool tone palettes aren't typically something I gravitate towards in terms of using. They're something I gravitate towards more so and like I see it and I'm like oh a cool tone palette better have it like I bought the Milani one it was a nine pan or 12 pan palette they came out with an original one that was more warm reds and something like that and then they came out with the cool toned one and I found that I like never used the cool tone one like I don't think I ever touched it and I was like what is the point of me buying this palette if I'm not going to be using it for anything you know what I mean like I was never using what I said I was going to use and it kind of like was a waste of money you know don't waste your money if you don't have to now I am going in with obsidian I have some weird names in here it's cool but it's weird and I'm just putting that all along my lower lash line and I have the brush kind of pretty far back so I have more control and it's not quite as harsh on my under eye because I was doing my makeup the other day and I went to do my bottom lash with a dark shade and it like put way too much and I was like maybe if I hold the brush further back on the like the handle then I'll have like not so much more control or less control but just it'll be like a more feathered you know application rather than like stamping or like harshly applying it yeah that looks nice i look a little bit sick but that's okay um times like this probably not so good but you get to see my funny faces as i'm doing my makeup 
Because who doesn't love that, right? I'm feeling that this is like a little bit blah right now, just in terms of like, it's looking a little bit glimmy. I don't know. Um, let's see, what other colors do I wanna use? I really like this Magnetic Moon. I think I might use that as like my shimmer shade. I always do like an outer shade, like a deeper shade out here. And then I go in with the shimmer and that's just kind of like what I do with my eyes, maybe because it works. This is Magnetic Moon. It is a little bit more gray than I was hoping, at least for this look. This is Sediment to Be. You can see, I might use that one because it's a little bit more like chill. This is Caving In. Maybe I'll use that since it's a little bit more gold. Yeah, it kind of looks like a rose gold, but it like mainly gold. So I'm just gonna go in with that one and just put that on the inner part of my lid. I think I need to put it closer to my fingertip because of the way I'm applying it. Oh yeah, this is nice. I really like ColourPop's formula for eyeshadows for just about everything. Maybe not so much face products. I find that I don't typically use those, but I do really like the way their formula applies. I think it's really easy to use. It's good for beginners, and I think it's also really good for people who've been using makeup for a while that like want to try new looks and stuff. And I think because it is so easy to use, it's like a better palette to use to make fun looks with and to try something different and like go outside your comfort zone when it comes to like putting on makeup. Now I'm going to go in with I Dig It, which is this nice gold, kind of a little bit green, but not too much and put that as my inner corner highlight. I bought those brushes and did a massive brush declutter yesterday and got rid of like half my brushes. I didn't so much get rid of them as I did like just put them away in the closet right there. Um, I, I think that some of them I'll still use. Like I have a bunch of brushes that I use like they're backup brushes to ones like they're just a duplicate of ones that I keep out. So I'm gonna keep those, but I do have a couple that I know I'm not gonna use or ones that I just didn't find myself reaching for. So that's something that I think I might either give to my sister or just get rid of. Um, I'm not, I don't really have anyone I can give makeup to anymore. My cousin that I used to give makeup to has moved and I don't see her much. So it's harder for me to give makeup to people and I don't like to give cheaper makeup to like people that like if they're not experimenting with makeup I don't want to give them makeup that I don't want and not saying that like it's bad makeup but I just you know what I mean like my cousin was like 15 or 16 or whatever whenever I was giving her like majority of the makeup and she all used it just to try out makeup just to see like what she could do just like do different things with it and stuff like be what it like teenagers and stuff so I didn't feel quite as bad giving her like some lower stuff that I just didn't use, some stuff that I never found myself reaching for, you know what I mean? So I don't know. Maybe I'll take some into like work or something. Be like, hey, you guys wanna try any of this makeup and see if you like it. Although a lot of the women at work like like one specific type of makeup or like one brand or they know what they like. So they just kind of gravitate more towards that, which is fine. But the one woman said that she uses a very crappy version, a very crappy color pop or cover girl foundation. And I was like, can I take you to Ulta and pick one out for you? Because you're not picking a good one. Like maybe you think it looks good, but you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't wanna see someone buy crappy makeup, even if they think they like it and it looks nice. Like I guess maybe if they do like it, that's, you know, Perfectly fine, that's up to them. I just use the ABH Contour Kit. It's the light to medium. It is the powder one. I forgot what I was gonna say, it's the powder one. But um, yeah, like, I mean, you can use whatever kind of makeup you want. I just don't want someone to end up like wasting their money on makeup that's not good. You know what I mean? Like anytime I see someone at like CVS or Walmart or 
Ulta in the makeup aisle. I'm like, can I help you pick out your makeup? Like, what are you looking for? Can I help? Can I give suggestions to you? Like, there's a lot of good ones depending on what like price range you want to be in. Like, you can get decent makeup from e.l.f. and Wet n Wild, but you can also get some nice makeup from Milani and Physicians Formula. So it just depends on how much money you're willing to spend, if that makes sense. I'm sure you guys, if you're here on YouTube and you're, you know, watching videos like this, you probably already know. I have, okay, I had a hair that was like hanging out by my face and I didn't know what was going on there. Yeah, it looks really nice. It's a very cool and like chill eye look, but I like it. Um, I just use the Clinique Pop Melon Pop um, blush. I honestly think I might give it to my sister because it's just not doing it for me. Like I'm not getting much blush results and since I paid $25, I'm quite like, not feeling it. This is the ColourPop F33 brush. Oh wow. I'm using the Wet n Wild Golden Flower Crown Highlighting Powder. I haven't used this in a very long time, but I forgot how much I like these highlighters. Yeah, that looks nice. I like the way that brush applied that too. Ew. That hair is like still in my mouth, it's gross. Sorry you had to witness that, guys. Ooh. I'm using the L'Oreal, it's like the glowy, dewy lip, Colorish Plump and Shine. This is in 107 Coconut Plump. I really like this shade and I love like the feeling it gives of the plumping. I don't know why, I typically don't like that But there's something about this that I really like. And I find myself really liking using this. So I might need to get one for my purse so then I can reapply. I'm gonna use the L'Oreal Shake and Glow Dew Mist. This is one of my favorite setting sprays to use. It smells like beer. It smells like alcohol, if I'm gonna be honest. But I really like the way that it applies. I think it works really well. I'm gonna go in with the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara because I haven't used this in a while. I know they came out with like an Exhibitionist Extreme and I would like to try it, but I'm not sure if it's any good. So I don't know. I'll have to look and see. I have the Air, the L'Oreal Air something mascara and I keep forgetting to try it. I haven't used it yet. It's like chilling out here somewhere on my desk. I don't know where, honestly. I need to try it, but I just haven't. So yeah, that is the final look. I hope you guys like this video of me just chit-chatting about random things. Hope you guys are having a good day, good week, good month, good year. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the notification bell down below so you get notified of when I upload. Go check out my old videos. Stay tuned for new videos, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!